Is a concrete ground bearing slab easier, quicker, cheaper, or are timber joists best? I've built both many times. Is there one way that trumps the other? Your architect and engineer will look at it from a design and regulations point of view and give you their preference, but they can't tell you how much it will cost. Your builder will say, those pen pushers know nothing. You should do it this way. At least they'll be able to say how much it will cost, I guess, but they often misunderstand the regulations. I'll tell you it from both sides, from ease of build and materials needed. We'll do a detailed cost comparison so you can make the best decision without being bamboozled either by your architect or by your builder and each of their personal preferences. Now we need to start by looking at the makeup of both solutions. The only way our concrete slab versus timber floor comparison can work is if we go like for like. So let's build two identical ground floors using the wonderful virtual 3D building environment. And I'm building these two examples brick by brick, slab by slab, stud by stud, as if they were being built in the real world so we can compare them exactly. And I'm modeling every element right down to the individual blocks and the joist hangers and if you want a detailed explanation of how I do that you can check out my other videos here. Now let's assume we're building a footprint 5 meter by 8 meters so 40 square meters and this could be the footprint of a small to medium sized home over two or three stories or a typical house extension footprint or even a small outbuilding such as a micro home or a garden studio. We'll assume we've built up our trench blocks from our strip foundations for both examples dug out the footprint down to the level we need. For concrete it is a bit deeper but we'll ignore that for now and we'll check the building regulations and see from the heat loss requirements that we need to achieve a U value of at least this and this will give us our insulation sizes which I'll come back to in a minute. And for a completely new build project it would be these U values would be a little bit more. We'll ensure the same structural criteria are used for both floors and we'll make it that both methods can be done using local materials and by a small builder or even you the self builder. And let's start with our concrete floor and working from the ground upwards. We need to dig out to get the ground compacted and I'll assume we'll do that with a mini digger, the same as the trenches. And we need a 150 millimeter layer of what I'd call hardcore, but these days I see it called type one sub base. A 50 millimeter blinding sand to protect the membrane from hard edges. Just plain old building sand is fine. And then we'll lay the DPM over our sand and then it's a hundred millimeter PIR insulation sheets laid super level and which I'll come back to and 60 millimeter perimeter insulation. Now I see a lot of 25 millimeter boards used here and that's understandable since that's what's noted in the building regulations but with 25 millimeters you're just creating an easy route for all that heat to escape and all that hard work and money you've spent elsewhere compromised by this daft detail. You need a minimum of 60 millimeters and you're cheating yourself if you go with less. These little details really matter for correct thermal control and it costs virtually nothing to add a thicker insulation at this point when you compare all the costs. Now with the insulation down we need to think about pouring our concrete next but before that we need to stiffen it with reinforcing to avoid any cracking as uneven pressure is placed upon the concrete. And for our mesh start with steel chairs to support the reinforcement off the ground so it gets encased in the concrete during the pour. We call this cover and then we place our mesh reinforcement mattress over these chairs which support it. We'll then pour the concrete to a depth of 150 millimeters. It will assume it's wheelbarrowed in from the street from a ready mix concrete truck. You can check out my video here about prepping for that. Finally, a 70 millimeter screed over the top to get our level finish. Alternatively, we could create a batten floor and chipboard or particle board over, and it would be about the same thickness. And we use 70 millimeters to give the option of underfloor heating. I guess you could get it down even more using self-leveling screeds, but there's a greater skill required for something of this size to achieve that. Now drainage, we'll have dug a trench and laid pea gravel to fall within the drain, all before the DPM level with collars at the pipe penetration. Timber floor next. Again, we'll scrape out down to ground level, 
50 millimeter sand to take out any sharp edges and to create a base. We're not using hardcore here, we don't need to because we're not putting a ground bearing slab onto it. We lay our DPM over and fold up around the edges and then we'll pour a weak mix of 50 millimeter blinding concrete to create a seal over this ground floor area on top of the DPM. The joist will be a minimum of 150 millimeters above to create a ventilated void or solum with periscope floor vents around the perimeter. And check out my video here about all things Solum. And using our span tables to double check, we need 170 by 45 treated C24 joists at 400 centers to achieve the required span. You could reduce the joist depth by introducing dwarf walls, but that would add more cost, so I don't see the point. 140 millimeter insulation between the joists. We'll tape a vapor barrier over the top. I'm using the superfoil reflective membrane and we'll leave it extended at the edges so that we can lie into and tape into the wall vapor barrier to make an unbroken envelope. We'll put 22 millimeter chipboard fixed with six millimeter screws and the joists are fold over joist hangers secured with twisted nails. We'll, we'll add two lines of noggings to stiffen in the other direction and we'll use a nail gun to secure the noggings with smooth galvanized nails. So those are the fixings for a timber floor. If you look at my cost for hangers and nails, you'll see they are significant. Don't forget about these types of things when budgeting timber. We call these miscellaneous items just to sound important. A note on insulation, how did I get the thickness of the insulation for both my floors and why are they different for concrete versus timber? For a detailed explanation of the rules, how to calculate your floor insulation for both floor types and why your area and perimeter matter, check out my other video here. Now if we cut a section through both examples, we can see that the finished floor level above external ground level is about the same, but an important difference being that we need to dig down much deeper with concrete as opposed to timber due to the requirement for the additional hardcore base. And if you ever dug down and then had to dispose of the spoil, you'll know there's an awful lot of work and hidden cost involved in that. But I've left that out of this comparison here since it's hard to be exact when volume and soil is a site specific thing. Now with our specification and makeup for both floor types understood, now we need to calculate our quantities and calculate our cost comparison. And using a 3D SketchUp model, you can use the entity box to calculate your quantities, or you can use the generate report options. I'm using a plugin called Quantifier Pro, which is well worth it based on what it costs. If you're just estimating using sketches and a notebook, the old fashioned low tech way, it's just as easy. I'm just a paperless geek these days. Once you've got your quantities, let's punch them into our pricing document. You can use my template here if you go to the link below. Your prices might be a little bit different. For our concrete floor to calculate our hardcore or type 1 MOT needed for a given volume in cubic meters, a typical bag is 800 kilograms, usually just called one ton bulk bags. So much jargon to learn. They'll be delivering by high ab and we will calculate our quantity by volume. I'll work out the volume by using the area of the floor multiplied by the depth in meters. And then you can use the following formula. So for a given volume, in cubic meters, multiply by that to get the number of 800 kilogram bulk bags needed. We'll need to hire a whacker for a hardcore to compact it down and get it level. And for our building sand, it's the same calculation as a hardcore, but this time using 1,600 kilograms for our volume. Insulation is 2.88 meters squared, so that's our divider. And prices I'm showing for things like these bulk bags are for cash purchases. You can always get better prices if you list everything in advance and send to a single merchant supplier using your quantities for one big order. For our concrete slab, we order by the cube for the ready mix truck delivery. And I've just taken an all in labor and materials cost for the screed as it's a specialist item, which I wouldn't recommend you try yourself. For the timber materials cost, it's the same process, volume calculation for the blinding layer. I've included all the joist hangers and fixings in the model, calculate the number of joists using the linear meter method. 
The insulation sheets are cut up and placed between the joists. And finally, labour for our example. Even if you can do it yourself, you still need to factor in. Our own time needs to have a value for comparison purposes. Plus, life things do happen unexpectedly where you might have no choice but to employ someone. We'll allow two people skilled and semi-skilled. Day rates are going to vary, so you can adjust these figures for what you think a local experienced worker will require and do the same for the labourer. Concrete first, two men, time for spreading hardcore, levelling, whacking down, sand, DPM and insulation and these days, time for fixing chairs and mesh. Concrete, pour over and flatten. Screed, I'll use a square metre cost as I said, and so you're getting the picture. Timber floor, labour next, two men to flatten the sand, add the DPM and the concrete mix, and timber joists and hangers. Two days, insulation between joists and vapour barrier, a bit longer than the concrete method, since we need to cut up the sheets to go between the joists. See my video here for that. And chipboard over glued and screwed. I haven't included time for floor vents since they are installed as part of the trench blocks and brick and take the same time as if you were laying a block in their place for the concrete solution. So here's our final cost and you can see the difference both in materials and labour. Timber wins the day, it's a saving of over 30% against the concrete and of course if you don't agree with me you can adjust all these figures yourself depending on how long you think you can do it and the day rate or how, how to pay a tradesman you can adjust this column here. But what have I missed? What's not right? Any questions? I'll always reply if you want to chat to me below in detail. Please, please give me a like so I can keep making these videos and I'll see you in the next one.